Hi again, everyone, and welcome to UWBadgers.com. I'm Mike Lucas, and with the opening of training camp, we're going to catch up with Brett. Brett Bielen with the Badger football coach. Brett, given the steady evolution of your program, how important was it last year to get to the Rose Bowl? Well, it was nice. Uh, I kind of remember being in the summer swing with all the uh, uh, fundraising and all that goes into it. I'd see people with 2,000 Rose Bowl hats and sweatshirts and T-shirts, and I always used to say, hey, it's time to get a new hat. It's a coach. It's time to go back to the Rose Bowl. So I think it was just nice to get uh, Badger fans back into a Big Ten championship mode and obviously back to Pasadena. But the exposure from that point moving forward has been unbelievable. Um, in recruiting, uh, television, as far as opportunities that have come across my desk for our program to get nationally exposed has been outstanding. Well, take, take a look at the big picture. What's next? How do you sustain that level of success? Well, I think uh, it's what, what have you done for me lately here at Wisconsin, especially uh, we've been so good for so long. Um, everybody just expects success. And uh, the, the part that we have to realize and kind of beat into our players on a daily basis is what it takes to get to where we are. Um, this new team coming in has got a new set of chemistry, a new set of faces that uh, are going to form what you see out there uh, this season. And, and with the training camp just coming up at the end of this week, it's going to be an exciting time. Since you took over as head coach, has the recruiting profile changed at all, the type of player you want in your program? I, I think it has. And it, the important part that uh, – we've tried to stress as coaches is don't change what we've been doing. Go after the same type of player, go after the, kid, the type of kid that we want here. Uh, they got to fit in academically, athletically, and socially. Um, but we have been exposed a little bit more nationally than ever before. We have people from the West Coast, uh, you know, the traditional parts that we always recruit, reaching out to us uh, in a little bit more proactive manner, and that's been a, a very nice change. Brad, the recent Big Ten meetings, you talked about coaches recruiting their own problems or their own mistakes. Expand on that a little bit. I, it's, a, it's a saying I learned early on in, in, in uh, my coaching career. Coach Fry always used to say, you know, recruit the problems that you want. Um, and all he did, he put a tremendous amount of pressure on you as an assistant coach. If you're recruiting all over the country, obviously, but if you, sign, if you get a linebacker and he's going to come play for me at that position, I better fully understand what he's all about. And all he was saying is, is you know, at times I think the, the temptation there is to maybe grab a little bit better higher profile athlete or maybe a little bit more athleticism or quickness and give up a little bit of character integrity and, and we really don't believe in that here in our program. We've really strived on you know, bringing kids into this program that are going to grow as much mentally and physically as possible. When you're in a home, can you tell a lot about a prospect just by the way he treats his parents? Absolutely. I made reference to this down the Big Ten meetings. Uh, a common rule that we've used a lot of times during recruiting is simply how do you see this player interact with a, a woman uh, of, of uh, whether it's a parent, whether it's a, a teacher, a guidance counselor, a principal. If he di is disrespectful a lot of times towards women, it's an indicator he's going to have issues later on in, in, in his life, either in campus while he's here or you know, future, future opportunities down the road. Um, I think there's a lot of times in a home you can kind of see where a kid has learned his discipline from. If he knows what being on time is all about, if he understands what the uh, meaning of, of being a badger would be, you know, as far as all the things that we incorporate on and off the field. What does that mean? What, what does it mean being a badger? Well, uh, fortunately for us, I think uh, last year we won a Big Ten championship, but it was also uh, coupled with we had the highest fall GPA in school history. So those two things don't commonly go together, but uh, I think it speaks to the type of kid we recruit here. Um, you know, I always also kind of as a rule of thumb tell our coaches, um, you know, all of our coaches are fathers, and if they couldn't recruit this kid and bring him into their home, and have them sit down and babysit their kids for a weekend when they're not there, I mean, not by NCAA rules, but in a hypothetical situation, don't, don't bring them into our program. Um, and, uh, you know, it's something that's worked pretty well for us and hopefully continue to do so. What are some of the rules, NC2A rules, that really hinder recruiting and that probably could be tweaked if, if you have that clout? Well, I, I think the, the biggest thing is what, what's happened over the course of time is they've taken away time that we get to evaluate players. Um, they've taken head coaches off the road in the spring. Um, they've limited the number of contacts we can make. And to me, if you're going to try and judge what a person is really like, you need more exposure. You need more opportunities to find out what they're all about. Uh, so I think that's an avenue that all the co uh, conferences are trying to explore a little bit. And then I think a big one is we have had tremendous success when I bring a player and a parent in here into my office and we sit down for a visit. But commonly, it's not feasible for a kid to not only travel himself, but also a parent to buy a plane ticket, get here from these out-of-state areas. and. I'd really like to have legislation that would allow us to bring one parent with them on an official visit. I also think it would cut down on the possible violations. Uh, you know, if a parent's in a company and a kid down around on a trip, a lot of times they're going to look out for a player's best interest, and that can only help everybody. Didn't you raise some of these points during the recruitment of Russell Wilson? Um, a little bit. Russell was unique because Russell, there's no spot in that NTA manual for 
a, a fifth year transfer that's right. graduated early. There was a lot of uh, things there that he grouped. Uh, he was grouped to be like a high school student. That's just not the case. Um, and it was an out of season or an out of normal recruiting window. So there was a lot of frustration there. But in the end, it obviously ended up working out fairly well for us. And um, you know, hopefully, it's something that the NCAA can kind of look at a little bit tighter. What does it take to be a good recruiter here at Wisconsin? Well, I, I think you have to understand Wisconsin. Joe Rudolph is our recruiting coordinator, and as you know from from being around him as a player and a coach, he stands for and embodies everything that we want here and he kind of passes that on. He's a tremendous recruiter for us on, on a daily basis. Uh, I think it's really important for for the people here at Wisconsin uh, to understand we recruit kids that like football. Sometimes kids are just naturally good at football but maybe, maybe they don't necessarily love it. Uh, for us to play the way we do and the way for us to practice you have to like football. So it starts with that and then you know we look for kids that uh, have high high character. Um, obviously because the academic standard here at Wisconsin they have to have a tremendous academic background. Um, you know, all those things together hopefully embody what it means to be a Badger. With the turnover on your coaching staff, you have to go out and recruit some new coaches. And I know that process was fairly intriguing this year, too. Yeah, I, I, I probably, uh, that's one of the most enjoyable parts of my job. No one likes to have change, but, you know, Dave Dorn, uh, an opportunity to go on and be a head coach. I understand that. Two of my other coaches went on to the NFL. Um, they could pay them a little better than I could. Uh, you know, and it's just a better situation for them uh, financially. So I understand that. But for me to be able to go out and, and hone in on some guys that I really wanted to bring into our program and uh, the ad addition of those guys, Dave Huxtable, Thomas Hammock, and Damani Cross have, has, has been outstanding. Um, and and I, I really like the fact that the majority of our GAs and student assistants now are former players that played for us, so they really know and understand what we're all about. Talk about that story you told in Chicago about Dave Huxtable and how you had to recruit his wife. Yeah, right? well, um, not a married man yet, but I'm engaged, so I begin to understand the power of, of the other half, and, and uh, Hux actually um, married his high school sweetheart, so they've been together for a long, long time. And uh, his children are now out of the house. Both his kids have graduated and moved out of, of the house. So it's the first time they'd be making a move as a couple only. Um, and uh, a lot of times in the, some other conferences, the universities will fly the spouse along with the, with the, pro, with the coach. Our university wasn't going to do that, so I just offered to buy his wife a plane ticket, come up so she could enjoy the visit. And I really think that was a key thing. Uh, for, for him to understand, hey, I'm not just after you, I'm after the whole family here, and, and uh, was one of the telling moments, I think, in, in his decision to get here. Where do you think you've made the most growth as a head coach? Um, probably all areas. Uh, you know, when you're younger, you think you have all the answers, you think you know everything, and uh, bottom line, I'll be a better head coach this year going into my sixth year than I was going into my fifth year. Um, I think if you truly are a great uh, evaluator of, of past failures, also understand why you've had success, if you truly have an open mind, open ears, open eyes to everything on, going on around you. You know, I don't like criticism, but I love it uh, because I think it makes you grow. Um, and the more you can get out of your comfort zone, like I used to, I really used to just not enjoy certain parts of my job, whether it be the recruitment of an assistant coach, whether it be uh, dealing with the media, whether it's dealing with uh, different functions and in, uh, in associations. And if you just embrace them all and kind of enjoy them, you usually end up being better at them. Barry Alvarez just signed a new contract. How important is it to have Barry around this program as far as a sounding board or more? Well, I, I always think about it from perspective. When I go to spring meetings for the Big Ten and you sit in a room and you're with every AD and you're with every football coach and, and to listen to some of those other athletic directors and the way they say things or handle things and uh, coach usually doesn't say much. He kind of just keeps, he always used to say we're always in the information gathering business rather than the information giving. And all he does is takes in information, lets other people kind of talk and uh, we end up being on the top usually year after year for the reasons that he sat right in that chair. You know, I can bring a young man in here uh, and I can say, hey, in the last 23 years, guess how many head coaches sat at that desk? And I could say two, me and him. Other schools, it's five. You know, if you're talking about the other Big Ten schools, now you're looking at Ohio State and Michigan in the same year have head coaching turnover. So it's kind of a fun time to have consistency. Looking back on last season, your players said they learned a great deal from the loss at Michigan State in the Big Ten opener. What do you think they learned from the loss to TCU in the Rose Bowl? Well, uh, I think they realized they were that close to beating the number two team, undefeated team in the country. Um, you know, and there was a couple of areas that we just didn't play very well at. Uh, it was a clean game. You know, if you go and look at a BCS game that had no turnovers and very few penalties, they realized just how good you have to be to beat an elite team. And uh, I think I uh, summed it up best. Somebody asked Nick Toon last week when we were at Big Ten meetings. They said, how long did it take you to shake off the TCU Rose Bowl loss and he said I haven't and I thought that was a great response because I think everybody's carrying that little memory in the back of their head as motivation. Well is that a driving force for you too and has it been during the Absolutely. Um, 
I can't tell you how many times, uh, if I'm just kind of alone or if I'm getting a workout or, you know, traveling and, and just time alone by myself, a lot of it goes back uh, to that game, uh, to the preparation and, and the days after and the feeling. Um, so it's definitely a motivating thing. You get that extra rep in? Yeah, actually, about ironically, TCU. one of the things we do is we, we hit the sledgehammer on a tire out there and I'll, I'll say T-C-U and a couple other words. It's uh, a good it's, motivating factor. It is. It's, it's, uh, I, I always want to have it alive in my mind. Uh, it's something that makes you who you are. Brett, what did you see last spring that would lead you to believe that you're going to have a good football team this fall? Well, this, this team is not afraid to work. I know that. Um, in the past, I've always kind of had to knowingly get them over a hump day or get them through a day when they weren't really motivated to work. And this group is not that case. And the same thing, you know, Ben Herbert has said all the way through winter conditioning, through the summer feedback and, and from the kids is, hey, here's what we have to do. This is how we do it. Now just go out and get it done. And, and that's what they've approached. Now, we've got some new people coming in. You know, we got freshmen. we got Russell Wilson. Have a lot of new faces coming in that possibly could help us this fall. So you got to integrate them into the same way of thinking, but hopefully good things will happen. How important is that summer conditioning phase to the overall program, especially since you have so little contact with the players themselves? You mentioned Ben Herbert. He's indispensable, is he not? He is, uh, you know, but also when, when the kids start throwing the football around, our coaches can't be there, strength coaches included. So that's when you rely heavily on senior leadership, guys that have been in the program for a number of years, snapping the younger guys in and making them, you know, toe the line the way we do it. And, and uh, you know, that's when it, we grow the most, but you don't really find out how much they grew until we get them here in camp in a couple of days. Well, how long will it take you to figure out if you're going to have the type of senior leadership you need to be successful? Well, I think within that first week, because everybody's, first day, everybody's flying around, second day, everybody's flying around, then they start to get a little sore, uh, you know, and it's that, that first day of full pads, maybe the first double day, uh, that it really is going to make a decision on what type, what type of team we want to be. When you hear the word expectations, how do you define it? Um, you know, that's a great question. I, I think last year we had expectations to be better than we were a year ago. I think, uh, you know, a lot of times I, I couple expectations with success. And all I know is this, if we have success this year, it's because we got better every week. Uh, we, we took the, the positives and negatives from every game that we had and moved forward. And at the end of the year, you know, the, uh, uh, the whole journey itself is going to be something that meets everyone's expectations, including mine. Is the start of the season still exciting for you? Oh, without a doubt. Um, you know, you become real restless, uh, and, and you just you got to. Seems like there's a million things, but really, there's not a lot to get done. You just got to kind of refine and and reshape everything. Um, it is fun because we do have so many new faces on the coaching staff. It's allowed me to kind of um, reiterate kind of the things that have made us successful over time. Do you feel pressure? Is there any pressure going into this year? You know, uh, it's the same thing every year. I, I mean, I want to win every game. You know, I mean, but that I had that same goal as a, as a, a assistant coach. You know, 10, 12 years ago. I mean, you just. You don't ever want to look back on a season and say, oh, I wish I would have done this or I wish we had had that back. Um, it's a season of no regrets. And for that, it's more of an excitement. It's not really pressure. In Chicago, you said it's fun to be a Badger right now. And I think you were alluding to not only the status of this program today, but the expansion of the Big Ten with Nebraska's addition and a Big Ten title game. Kind of wrap that up for us. Yeah, I, th I think uh, there's no other time in Big Ten history where you've had uh, the, the excitement around a new conference, uh, you know, obviously the championship game, but to bring in Nebraska, a team now, uh, what do we got, four of the most storied programs in, in college football, four of the top seven or whatever it is, um, and to be a part of that, and a lot of people think we're going to win the whole thing. I mean, uh, you don't get to that level with, by just being a flash in, in the pan in one season. You do it over time, and they've seen what we've been able uh, to accumulate and, and have con continue to bring kids in uh, to kind of buy into those same things. and. We are a little bit different than other people, you know, and, and you know, hear me say it all the time. We're not real sexy. We just kind of get things done. And, and to me, that's a formula for success here at Wisconsin that is second to none. Good luck this season, Brett. Thank you. For Brett Bielema, I'm Mike Lucas. Thanks for watching UWBadgers.com.